Hello, everyone. Today we are at Azure Open Dev. This program is totally not going to suck. Uh, it's completely live, which means you get to see me mess up in real time. Um, I am starting out with my journey to go, which is really interesting because I get to drone on a lot about myself and open source. So a little bit about me. I spent most of my life outside of the United States, and I also come from a long line of ninjas, apparently. My dad was a network engineer for NATO, which means that computers were always a part of my life. And I always had the best gaming computer. No, really, I really did fight me. Dune was always at my house. Um, I used to build with my dad's spare parts because my dad always had to have the, the latest and the greatest. So that was, that was cool for me. But sadly, I was a girl in the 90s, which means that I got to play with Barbies because girls didn't do computers in the 90s. It just didn't happen. My parents said, Ashley, you have an artistic brain. Computers are fun, but you should do something else. So I grew up and I became a photographer. I did that for about 10 years. And during that process, I realized a couple of things. You can't just go out and take pictures. You need a website. So I learned HTML and CSS and built a website. I needed a blog, so I built a blog. I needed to rank on Google, so I learned SEO. Everything was self-taught. It was really hard, but it was also a lot of fun. What happened, though, is that I learned that photography clients were not my target market. Photographers and other businesses were. Turns out nobody knew how to build a website. And just like that, I was a consultant because everyone needed a website. I was building websites for photographers, for hair salons, and then eventually I found myself doing a consulting job at Cisco. So I quit photography because what's the difference between art and pizza? A pizza can feed a family of four, and art can't, just so you know. So I made a decision to code. While front-end development is still development, I wanted to do more. I was 32 years old when I learned to code. Um, that is old AF, as the kids say. During that time at Cisco, I found a couple of small open source projects, uh, OpenStack and OpenShift, and I was contributing, doing uh, documentation for OpenStack and some front end work for OpenShift. I found that I really liked the tech community. It was really inclusive at the time. Uh, and so I, I started contributing, but I wanted to make even more meaningful contributions. But I didn't know where to start. How was I going to learn? Everything in OpenStack was in Python. How was I going to do that? So you know like when you go to a boot camp and you super regret it? So I'm going to bag on boot camps a little bit. Sorry, you people who went to boot camps. It's not your fault. In 12 weeks, 12 weeks a boot camp says they will teach you the following things. I'm not going to read it all to you because it's a very long list. But I'm just going to scroll through these really quick. Week one, two, and three. This is. This is an incredible list, you guys. S four, five, six, and seven? In 12 weeks, you are learning all of these things. That's not impossible. It's impossible. And just like that, you're a software engineer. They give you a card, and it says, Ashley, you are a software engineer. And I said, I am not a software engineer. I've been in this long enough to know what a software engineer is. So I made it my mission to teach new developers how to get in to developing on their own. I created this Introduction to Programming Resources. It's really great. A lot of it's free. Turns out these boot camps just teach you what's in these books for free. But I do understand that a lot of people feel like they need accountability of a class. So there's lots of people out there who are willing to mentor you or sponsor you. There's a really great uh, blog post by uh, Laura Hagen. 
Just Google it, mentorship versus sponsorship, and you should find it. It's great. So now we get to Go. I am an accidental gopher. I was writing Python, and I found myself at uh, OzCon in 2015-ish, and I met Steve Francia. Steve Francia is well known in the Docker and Go communities. He is now on the Go team at Google. And he said, Ashley, I have known you for five minutes. Will you teach a Go workshop with me? And I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Steve. Why on earth would I do that? I've not even written a Hello World in Go. And he explained to me that he has a hard time relating to the new developer. He's been doing it for a really long time. So it was my job to ask all of the stupid questions. And I did a really great job of asking stupid questions. So we decided to uh, do this workshop at OzCon. And as you can see, it was pretty decently rated, um, which is strange, because I had no idea what I was doing. In fact, I didn't know what I was doing the second time we did it or the third time we did it. And since then, we've given the workshop five times in three different countries, and I finally understand it, and I know what I'm doing. It took a long time. Lesson here, sometimes, I want to caveat sometimes, is just say yes. What's the worst that could happen? You could end up in front of 200 people talking about something you have no idea what you're talking about. But at the end, you might learn something. And also, nobody succeeds alone. None of you have. I am lucky enough to have a lot of people invested in my success. This is just a short list of those people. So thank you, all of the people on this list, for helping me and answering my dumb questions. So now we're going to get to contributing and eliminating, eliminating excuses. See live. Uh, I'm not a very good programmer. These are all my excuses, but I've actually heard some of these from you, too. I don't have a lot of time. My favorite one, I don't know what project to work on. This one I hear a lot. Myth, you have to be a programming wizard to contribute to open source. This is a really damaging thing to say, especially to newbies. There are lots of things that you can contribute to in open source. Open source is a community of people just doing what needs to get done. It's not always code. There are lots of things that you can do. So a couple of things. One, we need people of all skill levels. The wizards are great, but we also need the people like me asking the silly questions because if you don't understand it, it's likely somebody else doesn't either. Small contribution is better than no contribution. Fix the docs. Like, fix some grammar. Somebody needs to do that. The best project to start with is the one that you're working with right now. So, here are some other things that I can talk about. Strengths, start with what you're good at right now. I don't suck at graphic design. Um, Go has a really cute mascot. It's a gopher. That's why we're called gophers. Made by uh, Rene French. So I made lots and lots of gophers for lots of small projects in the Go community. Eventually, it got so overwhelming that I decided to make a website called gopherize.me with my friend Matt Ryer. Shout out Matt Ryer. Um, it gener it's, an, it's an avatar generator, and it turns out that that silly contribution had a lot more impact than I expected. InfluxDB uses it as their class photo. It's crazy. Not only that, people are using the API in new and interesting ways, and also making cakes. Somebody made a cake. That's crazy. This repo is just full of gopher images. It's all it is. It has 772 stars. That's not insignificant. At least, I don't think it is. I don't have that many followers on GitHub. So how did I know that gophers, these little gopher images, were going, were, were needed? I, I didn't. I didn't really, if I'm going to be honest. But um, the best way that you can know what to do with your community is to start by listening. Everything in open source involves other people. 
you're looking to join a team. So shh, we're listening. Mailing list. This is a big one. So for many projects, a mailing list is the main conduit of communication. You're going to find out lots of things that the project needs. Start there. IRC and Reddit, that's where the people who are contributing to the project complain about things. Figure out what they're complaining about and see what you can fix. Blogs. Most of your heroes and core contributors have a blog. Read it. Working with tickets. Please work with tickets. Please do that. There's lots of bugs in open source. Diagnose a bug. Let's do that. They're often poorly reported. Please diagnose a bug. Close fixed bugs. Sometimes fixed bugs just sit there. They just sit there, clean it up. It saves developer, developers time. Please do that. That would be cool. And working with code. We all know that code is what makes open source happen, right? So let's talk about that really quick. Test, beta test, please do that. Projects run on many, many platforms. Test it out. See what happens. If it breaks, report it. I can't emphasize this enough. Fix a bug. This is where lots of people get started in open source. Fixing small things, eventually that adds up. Write a test. More tests, please. You can't have too many tests, in my opinion. Some might argue. Don't do that. Add a comment. As I said earlier, if you are confused, somebody else is too. Docs. Please, please, please help with the docs. Oftentimes, documentation is written from the point of view of somebody who's actually writing that project. Um, it can seem like a manual. So somebody new coming in has a different perspective. So help with that. It's important. It might seem tedious, because it is. But it's important. Work with the community. Open source is all about the community. Answer a question. That's the best way to build people up. Answer my dumb questions, please. Write a blog post. If you find a bug and you fix a bug, or you're using the project in an interesting way, blog about it. Tell people what you're doing with it. Improve a website. Sorry, most programmers don't have a lot of design talent, and that's OK. But more than anything, pay it forward. If you're using a project and you're not contributing, shame on you. I feel like a hypocrite with this quote. Don't be too proud to accept help when it's offered. I often am too proud to accept help when it's offered. However, I never regret it when I do. Also, it's OK to fail. I do literally all the time. If anyone says that they don't, they're liars. Lying, lying, liars. And more than anything, we are a community of coders. But if all we do is code, then we've lost the community. Thank you. I am Ashley McNamara.